Hello everybody, that was a weird way to start the show, something about a pelican. <laughs> Welcome to Your Hood's Joke, episode 8. We're here with Canadian comedy legend Martha Chavez. Hello, Martha. Hello, Danish. Hello, hello. You know when people already call you a legend, a legend <laughs> is that they mean your ass is old. <laughs> your ass is old. You know what, let's dive right into that actually, because uh, we didn't talk about this before, but I meant to. Uh, yeah. I just saw Cat Williams's clip mm. on the radio in Atlanta, right? Uh-huh. He said a lot of things, you know, that uh, are being talked about right now. He has a problem with the kind of artists that he thinks are being promoted, like black artists in particular, Tiffany Haddish, Jared Carmi- Carmichael, Lynn uh-huh. Rell, Kevin Hart, and all that. So he has his own theories. But one specific thing he said. What? He said, because uh, the host of, that sh- of the radio show, uh, I think her name is Wanda. So he said about Tiffany Haddish is that, 40 other talented black women were skipped in order to give Tiffany everything the last year or so, okay? Uh Uh-huh. And in his words, this is supposed to be the only industry where the way a black woman looks shouldn't be held against her. Yeah. Right? But time and time again, they show you that you can be replaced by anybody who's light-skinned. Right? Oh wow! That's exactly what he that's said. A, that's what Cats Williams said. Yeah, and that it kind of it was two days ago, and since then Tiffany Haddish has been responding. She didn't really say much. She just said, "Haha, thanks for the shout out," kind of a thing. So she's been keeping it pretty classy. Probably, you know, also being advised not to start some kind of flame war. Oh but, yeah, because but, the, but like you know, there's a lot of things that Cat said that I just thought he was wrong. But that was a good point he made. What he was talking about specifically, because Wanda, the host, was actually defending Tiffany. Obviously, she was saying, you know, she is, she is real, she's funny. Blah, yeah, blah, blah. she is funny. She's hilarious, because Cat Williams's theory is that these people get ahead, these specific artists, because they are safe for a white audience, right? Uh-huh. So Lil Rel, Gerard Car- Carmichael, and Kevin Hart, in his words, are unfuckable. So they're not a threat to men. <laughs> and <laughs> Tiffany Haddish, white men, in his words, and uh-huh. Tiffany Haddish constantly talks about having wanting to have sex with white white men uh-huh. so his theory is that that is those are the reasons why they get pushed and others don't but the other so aside from looks he also pointed out that why is it that tiffany haddish is you know she's called real but a lot of the stuff she talks about is basically she's talking about pretty ratchet stuff like it's all about ghetto this ghetto that and he's like why is the concept of what's real for black americans always ghetto, ghetto? Uh-huh, exactly what if she, she if she was an accountant with a nice house and she, if she talked about that that's not real for black people you know so she's talking he's talking about he made certain points i would have never expected cat williams <laughs> <laughs> would i love cat williams i mean he he can offend me mm-hmm. but it's just uh, how would i say um uh, there is a lot of people that that can offend a person absolutely yeah but i i as a comedian mm-hmm. One of the specials I saw with him that he looked like if he was a cage lion, <laughs> and uh, that he was he, he was he did it in a round, was on, it? On in, a, in a round stage. No, I don't. I don't think I remember. I've only ever seen a little bit of Pimp Chronicles. That's his most famous one. <clears throat> I don't remember, but I saw one, and even Linda and I, mm-hmm. reputable lesbians, <laughs> were laughing, but like our heads off because of the sheer dare. Oh yeah, yeah. He's no. a he's a like some comics I can't stand, but mm-hmm. I always I always like um, daring people. No, absolutely. That Cat Williams. If there's one thing, he's, he's daring. daring. You know, he yeah. also honestly after that interview, like I, guess. I think his <laughs> pants got ripped <laughs> backstage, what? and they had he they had to bring him a new pair of pants. Wow! Like he was pacing so much <laughs> that his pants got ripped. They're like, hey, who's got an eleven-year-old kid? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he's <laughs> so skinny. He's, he's four foot nine. That's what I remember. Remember, maybe yeah. I'm I am going to be attacked for saying that I like a comic that it may not be, you know, what uh, an ethnic person. What happened? Oh no, we're just fixing the sound. Yeah. What an ethnic <laughs> person should or should not like. Mm-hmm. Some people like to dictate who yeah, you should no. and should well, not like. But I think that he's making a lot of sense. I like Tiffany Haddish, mm-hmm. but I don't believe that uh, ghetto is the experience of every black person or at no, this point no absolutely and you know the uh, uh, final thing that he said that stuck with me is that he owns first of all he was talking about how he has more specials than anybody else uh-huh. he's got nine more than richard pryor five more than this blah, blah blah seven more than chris rock i mean chris rock only releases one every eight years anyway so that's not a good comparison he has more yeah. than dave Chappelle, who released four this year i haven't really seen many of them but what he said was he owns 100 percent of every special he's ever made now 
if I'm not mistaken, he used to be a drug dealer, and so he can fund all this, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so there's that. Yeah. But he said that all of his specials, they make money, and it all goes back to him. So after release, let's say it's on Showtime or HBO, or whatever, he said he has like the number one comedy album on a bunch in a bunch of um, uh-huh. channels. But he said that after the f- initial release, they don't really promote it anymore. Because promoting it is only going to give make money for him, not for anybody else. Because again, he owns 100%. So I think that's a very smart way of doing it because yeah. these days, that's how we're all doing it, right? We want to yeah. own all of our jokes. We want to reach, use the internet to reach our audiences directly yeah, and not kind of go through the bottlenecks of like maybe only going to comedy clubs and things you know, exactly maybe like the way they were day, dug in the 80s yeah in my day it was that uh, i didn't start in the 80s i'm not that old <laughs> <laughs> i started in the in 1994 okay yeah but in in, in, in our day the when i took a, the way i started was that i took a course with andy Nullman, the ceo of just for laugh oh okay i mean the founder mm-hmm. the co-founder of c uh, i mean the english side founder mm-hmm. of Just for Love, Andy okay. Norman. So he he taught a, a course at Concordia University. And I was interested because I loved comedy, comedy mm-hmm. so much. I was interested in working at the Just for Love Museum. That was my interest. Oh, okay. I had read a lot <laughs> about stand-up comedy and I had gone to a lot of stand-up comedy being the festival in Montreal, mm-hmm. but I never thought that I could do it because of my accent, mm-hmm. my ethnicity, and that I was embarrassed to speak in public. Mm-hmm. So I took the course to challenge myself okay. to speak in public. And then the graduation of the course was a show, mm-hmm. and I got hooked. Yeah. Hopelessly. <laughs> hopelessly hooked. You should have seen how I woke up. The next day, the next day, I woke up in this state of grace. Mm-hmm. Have you ever woken up like oh, that? Oh, I know I, I, exactly after my first show. That's exa- exactly I know exactly. Like, this state of grace, <laughs> like, like oh. a smile. Yeah, I thought I was ready to be on because sometimes when you're very new, you you have absolutely no idea mm. of what this entices. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, absolutely no no idea whatsoever of what are the sacrifices that you're gonna make. Mm-hmm. The work that you have to put in. Yeah, you just assume you're going to be the next big, big thing they two months no, from now. No, I thought now. that yeah. I was ready to go on Letterman. Why? <laughs> because there good. was nobody in Nicaragua <laughs> that has gone on Letterman. So I thought that that automatically gave me mm-hmm. an in. And I, it was a rude awakening. The so work, you it know. Did, it, was, it did not help you to be Nicaraguan, to be gay, to be a woman yeah, in 1994. Yeah, at the time I was not out. I was not out gay. Oh, okay, because okay. I didn't even know what that enticed, you know. Oh, this is 90. Okay. I am very naive in this thing. Mm-hmm. I take the course with Andy. I, I do the first show. I remember that it could have been a disaster, this, mm-hmm. the first show, because it was on amateur night. Yeah, yeah. And I remember that, that you know, when you see the atmosphere of the club, mm-hmm. that is very dark. People smoke at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is very dark, and you know that it is, it is, sometimes you feel the sense of doom mm-hmm. in, yeah, a, yeah, in yeah. a room. And um, and then there were like 10 comics on the bill, because it's amateur night, mm-hmm. and three strippers in the front row. <sighs> Yelling oh and God. having a fight with Phil Phil Harrison was the name of the of the DMC throwing chips at each other. Oh my God! <laughs> and I am in the back, you know, pacing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to pace it from one leg to the other. Well, that was 1994. <laughs> yeah, you did just for laughs when? No, that was 1993. Oh, 93. Okay, okay. I did just for laughs in 1994. Oh, <gasps> okay. <laughs> my first just for laughs. Oh my God! In one 19, year. In 19, Nine months. Nine months. Okay, but then yeah. what, what do you credit that to? I mean, obviously you're funny, but do no, you well think I your identity the, helped? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. I do think, uh, like it was not a televised show. Oh, but you it did was, just, yeah. It was the Montreal show. Okay. Within Just for Laugh. And I got the spotlight. Yeah. Which meant you, you're the junior mm-hmm. and you only do five minutes. Oh, so it's like, but a, okay, it, okay. But it was still Just for Laugh. Uh, but the thing is that I, uh, the, the, okay, I prepare those five minutes and now, and, and now see them, and there are still jokes that I occasionally use mm-hmm. from those uh, five minutes. Yeah, of course. Like um, the UNICEF kid. I yeah, mean, yeah, UNICEF yeah, kid yeah. You've been feeding you've all been these <laughs> years because it still applies. Yeah, of course. I it never does. lost the weight. No, that's yeah. But um, my first joke was, uh, I know you have a, an awful. You think I, I have an awful accent and I don't give a shit. 
Okay. That was my first <laughs> she, job. Yeah, I yeah. don't give a shit. And then I talked about my husband because I did have a husband. Oh, you were married time. at the time? Yeah. But uh, now that the statute of limitations is over, <laughs> I wasn't married for love. Oh, okay. I okay. was married for papers. For papers. <laughs> There is no statute of limitations <laughs> in Canada. No. No. Shit. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I But mean, those were the no. I was married because my of my parents. No, no, I I don't. Yeah, I yeah. wanted my parents to because the mm -hmm. homophobia was so much <laughs> that I wanted my parents uh, to. Well, that's the thing is that even if you do talk about this, uh -huh. uh, you would be covered under the Refugee Act because yeah. theoretic, not theoretically, in in real life. You had to leave a toxic place. For, yeah, you know Nicaragua is not good for the. No, LGBTQ. but I was the one who gave him the papers. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Damn. He, that's yeah, he was. Uh, I gave him the paper. <laughs> I was Canadian by that time. That's hilarious. But this is gonna air. Yeah, of course it will. <laughs> <laughs> We don't edit anything out. The thing is, um, if, if anybody is listening to this, hey, great, that's fine. If you coming. if you get arrested because of this clip, then I would consider that a success. <laughs> yes. No, no. Like I, I, I really believe that, that I could, um, let's say, uh, change mm -hmm. in those days. Okay. So. <laughs> But I didn't. Uh, it didn't. Uh, we it didn't last long. Okay, well, so I mean, obviously, with st after starting stand up, a lot of things, everything changed. would have changed for you, right? Yeah, everything uh, changed. So anyway, like I, I do just for laugh on in '94, and the comments, mm -hmm. the critique of the show mm -hmm. was that the women, me and Heidi Foss, Heidi Foss, wow, me and Heidi oh, Foss, okay, that okay. the women were the weakest link, <laughs> and that Chavez, Chavez appeared green, and nervous. But you were new. Yeah. Okay. I was new, but I wasn't there. I did well. Like, mm -hmm. I have it. I have mm -hmm. it in, in one of those fat um, uh, video because yeah, I, yeah. My, I have been filming my career mm -hmm. for 25 years. So, I had it with, uh, I filmed with a camera, mm -hmm. with those those uh, video cassettes that were fat. And you saw, and you've seen that clip? No, I don't know how to see it because they don't <laughs> exist anymore. Oh, the, okay, the, okay. I mean, I saw it after I did it. But I was like obsessed. Like, how can I say that I was green and that I was nervous? I wasn't nervous. But then I realized I had a, I ran into John Rogers, who was a very nice comic from mm -hmm. the States. Mm -hmm. um, an amazing comic. And uh, and he went, he moved on to, to, he went back to the States to become a, a writer. He wrote mm -hmm. for Cosby. Okay. He's written a lot of things. So John Rogers uh, tells me to relax. He said that what they meant, Marta, he said to me, it's not that you're not good. It's just that it's obvious that compared to everybody else on the show with what John Rogers, Dave Acker, David John McCarthy, Barry Julian. Barry Julian is the executive producer of Colbert now. Oh, wow. And he had been doing comedy since he was 16. His mother would drop him at, uh, at the, I mean, his mother would go with him at the club. <laughs> and then, so he, by the time I started, all of these people have already been doing, Joey Elias mm -hmm, mm -hmm. have been doing a Scott Falcon Bridge. And you and Heidi Foss were brand new? I was brand new. Heidi began before. Oh, okay. So, but, okay. We, but you know, like uh, how it was, we were the only two women in Montreal. Whoa. So then when he told me that, you know, you don't have, he goes, All you do because I said my favorite comic is Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, and then uh, my that's my favorite comic. And then he goes, you don't have to see geniuses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He goes, if you got a chance, look at Canadian comics. Look at uh, Derek Edwards. Mm -hmm. Look at Brent Bot. How they mm -hmm. construct a job. He gave me good advice, and then I put in my head, I will never feel mm -hmm. as if I don't belong. Right. No, absolutely. I will never feel because mm -hmm. I, I mean I didn't do badly individually, but in comparison to the whole show, yes, I was green. Well, exactly. That's what I meant because uh, you know there's yeah. a very similar complaint in comedy today in 2018 uh -huh. that a lot of people get opportunities too early. Yeah. Because of who they are, not what they can say. Yeah. Right. So it tends to be mostly leveled at women. Yeah. And people of color. Yes. Right? Like, uh, yes, uh, the other day, I mean, I don't mean to interrupt you, no, no, but please, um, no. the other day, uh, uh, a friend of mine, white comedian, was complaining 
that uh, they told him that he was too old and too white <laughs> okay. to do the debaters. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to show you the list of people who do the debaters. Oh, yeah. The debaters is... Uh, and white, 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 You know, like, and then the person <laughs> of color. Mm -hmm. White, white, white. I never got it because I never got I said to myself, my, my whole fight has been all my life mm -hmm. to be considered a peer. Mm-hmm. Of the of good comics that I admire, a and funny comic, a funny comic, mm -hmm. and, and, and and to stop that, to, to, to that people wouldn't say, oh, Marta Chavez, she just got this because she was ethnic mm -hmm. or uh, or uh, ethnic or a woman or mm -hmm. gay. Mm -hmm. No, my aim has been to be a comic, mm -hmm. not a woman comic, not an ethnic comic, not a gay comic. Yeah, a comic, you know, uh -huh. uh, that that can hold her own because I can. Okay. No, I, no. I worked very hard, and in those days when I um when I began, uh, there were no no places, especially in Montreal, that is a uh, English comedy is uh, based is is a uh, comedy for the minority. Well, yeah, it's, there's not that many <laughs> anglophones. So yeah, we couldn't have so many clubs mm -hmm. like in Toronto mm -hmm. and the and the surroundings of Toronto mm -hmm. because there there was no audience. Well, yeah, I mean, For Montreal that. has had a big drain of comedians, English-speaking comedians coming from Montreal to Toronto and elsewhere because, yeah, I mean, Montreal's where Just for Laughs is, but how yeah. many people speak English in Quebec? Right? Exactly. <laughs> that, uh, the, the three show, three clubs were too much. Oh, even one club is it, like it's, almost, it's it is enough. <laughs> yeah. It's enough, uh, but uh, coming back to Montreal, so I did everything. I did shows at homeless shelters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did shows, I, I, I got involved with the spoken word community mm -hmm. where I made a lot of good friends that they would put me on the shows. I did poetry slams and I did my act. Mm -hmm. I did it uh, and then... Miracle. Yeah. A miracle happened in 1995. Kenny Robinson comes to Montreal mm -hmm. uh, with the Nubian Disciples of Prior show. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Robinson, he was produced by Keith and Karen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and my neighbor Shahid who was working uh, at the um, at Much Music. Mm -hmm. And they had, I don't know why Shahid had some relation with Keith and Karen. And he goes, yo, Marta, you know, Kenny Robinson, uh, you know that comic, Kenny Robinson? No, I don't know anybody almost. Mm -hmm. I mostly know people from Mon Montreal. And uh, well, he has a, he's putting on a, a black show, ethnic show, and uh, I can hook you up. Mm -hmm. Can I, can, do you want to do that show? It's at Club Soda. Oh, wow, okay. It's at Club Soda. 900 people came to the show. Yeah, yeah. Club Soda's great. I destroyed it. <laughs> nice. I did the black people. Like, I have that, that, that set, too. Mm -hmm. the way where you see black people. Woo, 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 like, I'm very excited like, over your set. Rocking. Yeah, yeah. No, they, black, the black audience says rock. Yeah, of when course. When they laugh. Yeah, they yeah. They express it. Ah, like so I destroyed it. And Kenny invited me to do it in Toronto. Mm-hmm. I come and do it in Toronto, and Mark Breslin was in the crowd. Oh, okay. And that's how I got into Yak Yaks. Oh, from the I Kenny's show. Oh. Yeah, I destroyed it in Toronto too. Mm -hmm. And my Breslin goes, uh, "You, you have to come. You have to start thinking about moving to Toronto." It's good advice. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna. You have to start going to Ottawa, which was close mm -hmm. to Montreal, and uh, and then you can already come middle. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right away, you know, like in Comedian was 20 minutes. So in terms of the establishment in this case would have been Yuck Yucks, mm -hmm. right? So you're now with Yuck Yucks. Did you find that they were like very good in terms of getting you gigs, getting you more exposure, getting you more shows? Well, you know what? How would I say? It's like a, it's like a, when you don't know, it's like when I became a refugee mm -hmm. that I did it on my own. I had no family here mm -hmm. because what happened is that I, I came here to finish my high school to a relative's house in Montreal because uh, the, 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 there were the young people were getting involved in the revolution and mm -hmm. my parents didn't want to. Then six months later in 79, my parents had to flee Nicaragua. Oh, okay. And uh, they go to Guatemala. And they tell me that we, you know, they, we can't support you anymore. 
My aunt goes back to Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. I can't go back to Nicaragua. No. Because I, I, my parents have been kicked out and I cannot go back where they are in Guatemala because I had no papers. Right, right. So I am in limbo here in Canada. My visa was going to expire and all of the Nicaraguan students started living together. Oh, okay. And one of them, his father had been a refugee. So he tells me, why don't you go apply for refugee status? So I did it on my own. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I was I was babysitting for a Jewish lawyer in Montreal, mm -hmm. Mr. Stephen Corda, in case he listens. <laughs> and he recommended me to Julius Gray, who became a major human rights lawyer. Oh, okay. And he, and he started the procedure of my papers. Mm -hmm. But I have my passport. I can show it to you. Mm -hmm. At one point, I was deemed stateless. Stateless, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, if I had known everything that it enticed yeah. at that moment, I, I wouldn't have applied. But then I started living with Giovanna, my first girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go back anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and was, my prayer was, please, please, like, don't send me back. Yeah. And my and my parents never had any interest mm -hmm. in moving here because they, they were lawyers and they didn't speak English. Mm. And uh, in Guatemala, at least they could work. They could work as, as lawyers. Oh, okay, okay. And mm -hmm. then my my father passed away in '82, but my mother became a lawyer all over again. Like oh, okay, she okay. did her equivalences there. And of course, whenever they in, had the inclination, maybe we should all move to Canada. Mm -hmm. no, no, because I was already in my lesbianism. Yeah, yeah. And you know, oh. but it's it's just like that with comedy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know everything that it enticed. Mm -hmm. All the work I didn't know that there was gonna be racism. I didn't know. I mean, because I didn't. I didn't think about that. The only thing, uh, uh, the only thing I thought about, and I have my diaries. Mm -hmm. I can go read it. I can go read it. Like there were, there were people that I occasionally hated. <laughs> that, that that now that I read it, why did I hate like that a little person? Kill list, be like, yeah, like dead to me, dead <laughs> to me, dead to me. Dead oh, to this me. stupid guy. <laughs> what he did to me? He grabbed, he grabbed my camera and put it la, da, down because I was doing better than him. What? Yeah. Fuck that guy. And then the guy, then we are friends, and we have <laughs> never, we I have never brought it up. stupid things like high school. Okay. And, uh, and of course. There, there was a they uh, yeah, yeah, gave me enough enough work. Uh, I mean, I never made a, a tons of as I made. I moved only here uh, into Toronto in 1998. Oh, okay, okay. But I started working for them in '95. But like going to Ottawa, mm -hmm. and then they will uh, I would come and do a tour here as a middle. So when you say that you didn't expect the racism, you mean racism? from the audience in the sense that they didn't understand your jokes or they just were whatever no. from comedians I, from the no, from comedian or the audience i knew that i was different mm -hmm. i acknowledged that i was the ideal mm -hmm. that's why also i didn't come out right away because i mean i had enough with the ethnicity mm -hmm. and, and the accent right if i tell them i'm a lesbian does she have a an accent with her pussy too <laughs> <laughs> in her labia too i it was too complicated well yeah you have to concentrate in what you can in comedy well that's what i mean so your identity was a liability then no i didn't hide it i just didn't uh, i just didn't talk about it you didn't talk about I it i didn't talk about it but I, I also didn't talk about the only thing is that i married this uh i, I would say that I married this guy and I think he just married me for the papers. Right, right, yeah. Because yeah. when uh, when uh, we are we make love, he will go, oh, baby, oh, oh mommy, oh Canada. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only joke. I never talk about relationship with men. Yeah, yeah. I never talk about. Uh, That's about hilarious. Some, that oh, oh Canada. <laughs> oh Canada, I'm gonna bring it back. Please, please, <laughs> gonna bring it back. I usually do it when there is a, an American with a. With a Canadian in the crowd, I oh, go. Okay, do okay. You, does he go? Oh, maybe <laughs> oh, oh, Canada. But the thing is, I didn't. Uh, I knew what bugged me the most. I, I mean, uh, a manager, and I'm not gonna say his name. Mm -hmm. I go to his club right after doing uh, just for love, and then and then I wanted to meet. I I came mm -hmm. demanding that I wanted to already middle in in his club. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I, uh, I I had done just for laugh, and he said to me, "Well, you know why you did just for laugh? You were a quota." Right, right, yeah. He said to me, and I held back my tears. Mm -hmm. And then I and then I thought maybe. Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe that I, I mean, and I thought maybe, and I and I put myself. I will never feel like that again. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we, because I mean, people are going to say even today, no matter how funny anybody is, there's going to be so, uh, there's going to be somebody out there's like, oh, that person only got because they're a woman, they're a person of color, their uh, sexuality, whatever. So it's kind of up to us to just not think about that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, a, uh, the, the good thing about stand-up comedy, though, is that you prove it when you do it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. no matter what you say, mm -hmm. if they are laughing, mm -hmm. I'm doing my job. That's what I mean. Like, if the audience is laughing, you're doing your job. Exactly. Humor is subjective to begin with. Exactly. Right? So what's funny to one person is not to the next. This is all ba very basic. What I, what I find interesting is how people double down on their preconceived notions of what an art form is and if you don't do it this way yeah you are not an artist it's exactly like a comedy is not soccer mm -hmm. so in soccer you put the ball in the net mm -hmm. without touching it with your hands mm -hmm. you got and, rules and then you, you you got rules you mm -hmm. you do like comedy is absolutely subjective but if i see that i can comedy is translation mm -hmm. I, it's not only translation from my accent and my experiences in Nicaragua, it's translation f like anywhere that you go, mm -hmm. it's translating your person to this audience. And I don't mean pandering. No, no, I, no, I, I know what I, you're I, saying. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I always thought I never pandered. I never, I never put down my own to... I mean to um, to exalt the the white people. Right, right. And right. also, you know, there is another thing that I may have not been a comedian with a big because when I went to Los, I went several times to Los Angeles. When I went to Los Angeles, I saw that Latin comedians talk a lot about uh, about the ghetto, their ghetto, mm. about coming from the hood. And I didn't, co like, from Nicaragua, I yeah, didn't come yeah. from the hood. No, no, I know, because I get a, I mean, <laughs> when I see, like, let's say, brown comedians, right? Uh -huh. And I hear them talk about certain things, like, you know, you know, like, I didn't grow up in the same circumstance. Like, exactly. I've been traveling a lot. I'm Soviet by birth. I grew up in the USSR, yeah. right? <laughs> and then I was poor in poor countries. Yeah, <laughs> right? I lived, exactly. You want to talk about the ghetto, try living in the poorest neighborhood in Bangladesh exactly. I'm not even joking the number one export from the neighborhood I grew up in is terrorism wow okay like that place is called it's in Dhaka it's a neighborhood called Mohammedpur you know no. how you know how Chris Rock <laughs> has a joke about if there's any street in America named after Martin Luther King uh -huh. you're gonna die yeah <laughs> right it's like if it's MLK Boulevard you're about to get shot it's the same with Mohammed if yeah. a neighborhood is named <laughs> after Mohammed, uh -huh. there's some shit. Uh, on my 14th birthday, I saw a guy get shot in the head in front of me. Like, uh -huh. boom, he bled out in front of me. Um, there's a bad neighborhood. <laughs> That's right? a bad neighborhood. But it's not the kind of subject matter that a lot of South Asian comedians will talk about here because it's, uh, it's more about immigrant families, the dynamics, Bollywood, arranged marriage, like, things like that, yeah. right? Um, so, yeah, there's always like this tension between what people think your identity is and who you are individually exactly right? i always wanted to i was always like i i, I did it. i and then i started seeing Russell and all of the other brands when i came to ontario it was a, a it was a complete other test because mm. in montreal i was cocooned and you're looking and, and you're and also and being looked at by quebecois like from the french lens ex almost. Ex <laughs> yeah. exactly but no and i was in a minority uh, allophones we, mm -hmm, call, we mm -hmm. call the people that Who's, who are immigrants in, in Quebec and speak English. Allophones. I was an allophone. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was respected by the festival. I got the festival so many times because I hosted a show called uh, Globecom. Mm -hmm. I was the host uh, for four years in a row, so that's mm -hmm. why I have so many just for laugh uh, under my belt, but only only three well, three galas well also because you're funny yeah yeah <laughs> no that. no i know but i mean i was i i, I did it was not tv mm, mm -hmm. what i mean i can say i've been in just for love 13 times but it's not that i have 13 galas no no of course it's a big festival exactly. right so yeah. you have live shows only what 10 percent of it is actually televised right? uh, now it's more with the with the um, with the Netflix, kevin hart, kevin and hart. All of that. yeah well yeah so so that's uh, the other thing i wanted to talk to you about is because let's say if you had started today, like would you actually prefer to do your career started in the present conditions or the conditions that you actually faced? Do you, the question I'm getting to is, do you think things have gotten better or worse? They have. I think they have gotten better in the sense that in my day, as I was telling you, the only hope 
for television mm -hmm. was that you go to the festival, mm -hmm. you go to a gala, mm -hmm. and then you hope because in those days Margaret Cho got got his seat, her seat. I mean, her seat come uh, just for laugh with four minutes of material. Oh wow! Her Korean seat. Uh, mm -hmm. Tim, who else got it? The team. Uh, The Tulman Taylor. Tim Allen. Tim Allen got his career in Just for Love. Mm -hmm. Ray Romano got his career. In those days, they were handing sitcoms. Yeah, exactly. So you were doing the, 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 that was your hope, you know, like I hope. So your hope was to hone. I had the guidance of Andy mm -hmm, Nulman mm -hmm. too. And of Ernie. Ernie Butler, may he rest in peace. He he took me under his wing. Mm -hmm. So he would take me all of the, all of these outside shows from the club to Cornwall yeah, to this, yeah. to that. And then um, uh, that you had to have seven minutes in which they would build a show around you. Oh, so you got to give them the elevator pitch in your set, basically. This Basic, is who this I is am. The elevator, like Roseanne. Roseanne, mm -hmm. let's say Roseanne was the domestic goddess mm -hmm. in those five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, no, we were talking about Roseanne uh, earlier, uh, right? The great Romano was mm -hmm. the guy who was married and who had an nagging mother right. in those seven minutes. I think Kevin Hart, Kevin, uh, the other Kevin. Kevin... Dylan? <laughs> no, no, Kevin, the fat guy. Oh, Kevin James. Kevin James. Yes, he yes. hosted one of my guys. Kevin James also got in Just for Love. I got offered a, uh, in, in 1998, I got offered a holding deal mm -hmm. that they would hold me as if eventually something came in their, in their uh, programming that would be appropriate for me. But my managers at the time, mm -hmm. who were the same managers of Chris Rock at, by the time, they said no, because it meant that you would be there waiting yeah, in Los Angeles, and then if you didn't get a, anything, you would become damaged good. Yeah, exactly. You became the one who uh, lost uh, a holding uh, deal. Yes, exactly. it was it was $60,000. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was the time when Pete Johansson got like 600,000 or something. Oh, wow. He got a lot. I don't know, maybe I'm for exaggerating. For a show? No, for a development deal. Oh, wow. I got a holding deal uh, uh, offer. He, he got a, an actual development deal. Oh, I mean, P. Johansson, Johansson is yeah. hilarious. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. He's, he's hilarious. He's he, like so smart. And sharp. Very, the kind of jokes I want to hear, actually. Yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. Sharp mm -hmm. and feminist mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of things that... that nuanced. Uh, nuanced. Yeah, there's a lot of like he's open to learning, right? Which I find people are very hardened these days. It's like Camp yeah. A versus Camp B, red versus blue. Right? Exactly. And then uh, and then what happened is like uh, I got the movie. I got the movie with Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. I got the movie with Denzel. I got mm -hmm. the movie. And then uh, by 2006, my when I had already uh, uh, saved enough to move to Los Angeles, my mom got sick. Oh. You know, things like that happen. Mm -hmm. My mother gets sick and then I go to Guatemala and all of the savings went into her brain cancer. No, no, yeah. That's, you know, like, yeah. and I don't regret it. By the time I came back, because I was coming just to do tours mm -hmm. here, by the time I came back in 2008, mm -hmm. things have completely changed. Yeah. The, I mean, you, you got the internet. Of course. You got, like, they don't give deals at Just for Laugh no. anymore. No, hell no. no I mean, because it's so easy. You know, you, you know, you know what I mean? It's now there is the... the, the web series well yeah now is all of that the model for stand-up comedy has changed completely right because in the 90s you know you 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 had to go through a club to the festival to the deal yeah right uh, and these are all the way i see their filters yeah uh, but with the internet it's kind of the opposite you first make a name for yourself because you can access your audience a million different ways youtube yeah. instagram twitter tumblr whatever what what have you right I'm trying to do the exact same thing with your hood's a joke. I'm trying yeah. to take it directly to the audience that will like it because I can. They don't have to wait for Friday night or Saturday night to come and see someone new and then find out more about them. I was actually last episode, I was talking about this with uh, Jerry Hall. Uh -huh. You met him? He was also on the last, the your hood's a yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Hall from Hamilton. From Hamilton, yeah. yeah. So he was saying that, you know, before he was doing comedy, like 20 years ago, he said, if you let's say you lived in Hamilton, you wanted to just see a show at Yuck Yucks on a Friday or Saturday, you'd have to buy the ticket on a Tuesday. Otherwise, it would be sold out. Sold out. Everybody knew that. You got to buy the ticket Monday or Tuesday, otherwise you're not going to be able to see it. And there goes your chance to be entertained. Now, 
just Google the person. You can see their whole library of shows. You don't have to go down to any club. Yeah. Right? So that is the advantage it gives the creator where you don't have to wait for some gatekeeper, some kingmaker, some star maker to discover you. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but it, there is a, a how would I say this, it's a, it's a double edge. Yeah, no, of course sword. there is a lot of garbage Because gets cleared. For example, <laughs> I was I was one of like they told us mm -hmm. that everybody everybody like all of the guys that I looked up to and that I'm going to emphasize I had almost no women to look up to. Okay, yeah. yeah I, right. Basically, I had nobody to look up to because I was a gay ethnic woman. Mm -hmm. Who was I going to look up to? <laughs> yeah, another thing. Know, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I, uh, I, I idolized uh, a lot of the guys I like. I love Roseanne, although I didn't identify with her because mm -hmm. because then I then Margaret Cho came along. Mm -hmm. I love Margaret Cho mm -hmm. to look up to. I could say I say it could be a, a Margaret Cho. I mm -hmm. have a mm -hmm. show, and in fact that, that's why I had so such good management. Well, absolutely, because you see yourself reflected in the industry. Suddenly you're like, oh, maybe I have a shot here. I think a lot of people uh, exactly. who, who have always been represented don't understand that. But people, for example, in my day, they told us if if industry is like if the gatekeepers mm -hmm. see you, especially since I lived just for laugh mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, if if um, if if the gatekeepers see you and you're green, mm -hmm. you're you're doomed. Yeah, you have to be seen when you're when, uh, when, when you're so and, and at the moment, some people put out mm -hmm. clips of them in uh, stand-up comedy clips in, in the clubs or whatever that in a few years if they do develop as a, as a comic because this takes time yeah it's true it's no, like yeah. stew it's like a stew it takes time you cannot you cannot be it's, it's like practicing the guitar no absolutely yeah you that, know, it is it takes time like uh, you cannot play, pretend that you're going to present something as a concert mm -hmm. when you just know a few notes yeah no that's you're right because a lot of comedians will release clips of themselves that when are they not shouldn't, ready when they shouldn't and that's no. the first impression you get of this person you're like oh and then you kind of you know i'm the same way if i see someone like, you know i'm out doing shows and you see somebody bomb a couple times blah blah blah. as a comedian you know what's going on but you can also see the audience kind of like making like doing a check mark in their head almost be like oh this is how this person is yeah right it's the same with yeah just posting you know your clip when you've only been doing yeah, comedy I, for listen, a year. Listen, I am so happy. You know you know me. You mm -hmm. see me with my camera yeah. in every <laughs> yes, show. Yes. Like I'm the person that has taped 25 years of career yeah. in every show, be it a coffee shop, mm -hmm. be it a, because you don't know what's going to happen there. And that's, yeah. so that's one of the ways I write. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, so many times have happened that I say something and I don't know why was that funny, but I repeat it and they laugh again. Yeah, no, same way. I've, I mean, when, when, <laughs> I mean it's not for everybody to see. It's only for, and it's so hard to watch yourself. It's so stuff. hard. Like, I hate to watch myself. <laughs> but I remember that I have jokes that I am sure would get me in trouble now, not because I was or have ever been an offensive comic, it's mm -hmm. because I, I didn't have certain awareness well, yeah, that's at how, the time. That's just a change of, you know, that's just people growing and changing and the world growing and changing. And changing right? For example, I used to say, uh, this, I used to say this joke uh, that uh, the Eskimos... Oh, so the, you're already the, in trouble now. Exactly. <laughs> the Eskimos have a hundred words for snow. Mm-hmm. Because there is a lot of snow, mm -hmm. so they they don't think it's one one word if you know is enough to describe snow, mm -hmm. which I don't understand why Latin people don't have one hundred words for injustice. Uh. You see, like <laughs> yeah, the yeah. joke is good, no, but as, as soon as I said the word, as if I said the but word Eskimo, today you would have you would you could easily switch that to say Inuit. No, I I yeah. I know, but it's in recorded. Right, right, it's, right. Is is uh, uh, I uh, what else did I say? And I have like ten, I have like ten years of clips on the CBC. Well, yeah, but I'm sure that there are some things Th round up. There on. are plenty of jokes. I think every comedian has that they won't do or can't do anymore because it was very specific to the time. And you know, eras change. What people think is funny, what what is considered <laughs> punching up and punching down, even that changes. Oh, like right? like I used to have this joke, and he's not even that old. That I would say. Uh, Um, that I believe that Canada is peaceful mm -hmm. because it's cold. 
Okay. Baby, because there is no cause whatsoever that is mo going to make me move my ass <laughs> in minus 20 degrees. But today that's not and true. Then, You're always out there yeah, at marches. And then I go, especially <laughs> I'm not going to go protest about global warming. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the joke is I'm cold. Yeah, you're cold, I yeah. Want, I want more. That it's a, and I fuck the polar bears. I'm more <laughs> important. But I know where I'm coming from. It's mm -hmm. not that I don't care about that. No, it's an absurdist it's just, uh, take. It's an absurdist take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for me. Yeah. <laughs> God forbid that would be out. Oh, she doesn't like the polar bears. That is true. The scrutiny today is like the scrutiny is the is scrutiny is is, is is a lot of scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like I'm, I'm sorry no, I no, talk ahead. a lot. Sometimes is you know that is I mean ignorance is not a, an excuse. Mm -hmm. Ignorance is not, not an excuse. I didn't know up to one point that First Nations are not co are not to be called Indians. Mm -hmm. No, I be didn't know that either. Because for a long I time. have a, I have a, or, or natives. Mm -hmm. I because I have a, a First Nation friends that call themselves Indians. Right, right, right. So I didn't know, you know, but but that's that ignorance doesn't excuse me. And I think I may have. A clip on the CBC, CBC that says, in um, in Winnipeg, I look Indian. Right, People right, People ask right. me, what is your Indian name? I say, dances, <laughs> tap dances with immigration. Okay. That's what I think yeah, I say. Yeah. Well, I, I had the, somebody asked me, what is your Indian name? And I said, Indian name. Yeah, like dances with, sal uh, with uh, dances with, with wolves. Oh, okay. And I said, oh, my Indian name, tap dances with, with immigration. immigration. Yeah. But now I cringe. Of course. At the, at the, at the word Indian. And mm -hmm. it was never it was never malice from well from that's my the thing part. that's you willing to change right what i find yeah. is because there's a especially there's this tension right between you know new comics and everybody else uh and one of the things is people who are like yourself who reflect right and uh -huh. evolve and adapt and change and others who think the very act of changing is some kind of attack on them no you know that there's there is that because Yes, of course, there's a lot of overcorrection happening. Yeah. Or there's sometimes too much scrutiny where you take something said by somebody 10, 15, 20 years ago and you hold that to today's standard and yeah. you punish them by today's standard, even if they've evolved and changed and grown, right? Yeah. I think that's incorrect. Like people should be given an opportunity to be better themselves, obviously. But at the same time, there's others who are like, why shouldn't I say the whatever, insert any number of words or whatever they want to say? There is some, some people that confuse assholery mm -hmm. with edginess. Correct. Yeah, and, know, like and they, a, they don't yeah. even know any of that. They don't understand that no. sometimes people aren't. People are just shocked by what you're saying. They're not impressed. No, they are. So, <laughs> for example, some people cannot him. take Stan Hope. Mm -hmm. I can take him mm -hmm. because I see the intelligence. I see right. the satire behind. Mm -hmm. I can just not take somebody to to be to be attacking women and, mm -hmm, and minority mm -hmm. because you're attacking me. There's no art. There is no, you there don't is no see art. the art in it. They think that just the act of being shocking is art. Yeah. No, it's not. And a nine-year-old can do that. And when you're a white comic that comes and tells me, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't get uh, booked because I'm a white guy, I want to punch you. <laughs> like, I want to hit you I'm with a baseball bat. Yeah. That's what I said to the comic. Go see the, the list. Look at the list. On this, go see the, the list on, on Just for Love, mm -hmm. the ratio of male to females mm -hmm. and the ratio of, of white people to ethnic people. Go do you, see it. Do, like, you, do me that favor. Well, that's the thing, right? Because uh, when big festivals book people, right? In Canada, you know, JFL, Winnipeg, JFL Toronto and all those, right? Every time there is a show with more than two people who are of, of, of some kind of ethnicity, that charge comes out. That, oh, they're just doing it based on quotas. They're doing yeah. it. And I'm like... Well, have you actually listened to those people? Uh, there, are, I have not gonna lie. In the last five years, I have noticed here and there people getting opportunities when they should, and I think that's a problem that has existed forever. There's yeah. always people who get chances before they're ready for X, Y, Z reason. Yeah, maybe because they slept with the right person. Maybe they're the right identity. Maybe they're saying the thing that the network wants to put on TV for whatever exactly. reason. Exactly, it has all these other like factors, right? That hasn't. It's not new. But suddenly today it's like, oh, well, that show has three women and th all three of them are ethnic and one of them is gay. And the only reason all three of them got in is because they're ethnic, women or gay. 
I have them three, <laughs> yes. and I and I and I, and I, and I, and I am limping from my foot. <laughs> I am also differently able. Well, that's my <laughs> point. Is, is that so the, the argument of quotas and all that has been around for a while, yeah. right? But there has been a change in how shows are booked. Like when we talk about, okay, look at the number of white comics versus ethnic comics. There is an argument to be made that it's also how many people are trying comedy. It's more, yeah. way more, by a factor of, I would say, 20 exactly. to 1 to and, white people, and right? And who was like, for example, when, when Kenny began the Nubian show, mm -hmm. black comics had, had a lot more of opportunity mm -hmm. To do the to to be in the Nubian show. Well, yeah, exactly. And so that was a, a you know like it was a it is, and it still is an important show. Yeah. A lot of comics believe that it's amateur night. No, <laughs> they don't know what the hell they they're don't talking know about. What the hell, okay, it's the a Nubian hard room show sometimes. Is a hard <laughs> room. I almost get booed because <laughs> in the other in the other uh, room that it, where Absolute is now, mm -hmm. that was Yak Yaks before, mm -hmm. and uh, this was uh, in the early two thousands, mm -hmm. and. The DMX was in town. Oh wow! For some reason, and he came to the Nubian show, mm -hmm. and his bodyguards are in the back, <laughs> having a fight with the manager of Yak Yaks, and oh. so people are looking like this. People are looking. Yeah. And Kenny Robbins said, "Hey, hey this is Marta Chavez. She's in a movie with Chris Rock, and give it up for her." But I went timid. <laughs> I went timid because I know. Something's up. That something yeah. is happening and DMX is sitting there and mm -hmm. looking at me. And uh, so I went like, a, I mean, like, like, like I was not like with the force that I mm -hmm. usually am. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I start hearing in the back, in the back of the room. <laughs> What? The the uh, the ironic applause. Oh my god! So I was supposed to do fifteen minutes. I did ten because I don't think I was gonna recover from the booing. Well, yeah. Because when they booed you, was oh. merciless. The Nubian show tells you when they don't like you. But not anymore. <laughs> no, not this crowd. I don't think booing happens anymore. Oh, but at the okay. beginning, like uh, there was a guy. There, uh, there was a guy. That, uh, I'm not gonna say his name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they boo his ass. And then uh, was he the token white comic? No. Oh, okay. Because they no. have he kind of puts on one put white some, guy per show. Sometimes, like the mm -hmm. guys that, like for example, there was a guy uh, who is now classified as a sex offender. Oh dear God! You know who he is? I know exactly who you're talking like, about. I forget his Actually, name. Actually, no. There's seven people I can, I'm thinking of right now. No. <laughs> <But it's okay. laughs> what was his name? Rob Cliff. Oh that right, guy. that guy. No, that he's guy. he's but he's actually but, a sex offender. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But he grew up in the he grew up on Jane and Finch mm -hmm. with a black family, and he had like the perfect patois. I've he heard could, that he used to be very popular at Nubian he Night. He was the mo one of the most popular people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because pe black people love it when you can talk, when you can impersonate. Uh, oh, I like don't that, yeah. really. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I don't do it that much because there is people that that need it more than me. Of course. Yeah, but uh, yeah. whenever, like uh, Kenny, I will always credit with the fact that he was. Uh, you know, if I hadn't done that show in Montreal, maybe I wouldn't ho have come well, so early. And, to and I'm sure there's that's see. So that's what I wanted to get at. So the Nubian show did a lot for you. Yeah. And I'm sure I know for a fact it's done a lot for a lot, for of, a other lot of people who yeah. would not have been in that room seen by those people if not for that show right so i got my comics episode at the nubian show yeah exactly so today yeah. in fast forward to 2018 over 20 years after that yeah. there are innumerable number of shows that are very niche that are specifically for certain kinds of comics certain demographics like yeah. the nubian show was the all black comedy show which kind of was seen as the ethnic show, yeah. which is kind of odd because its mandate was specifically the, the Nubian, Nubian, Nubian black. disciples of prior, prior. Yeah, show. Yeah, Nubian, disciples, ah, Nubian right? disciples of prior. Exactly. So now we've got... <laughs> <laughs> now we've got like so many, even Your Hood's a Joke, my show is a battle show, but obviously because of the nature of it, I have a lot of diverse comics on, right? Yeah, you cannot be having the same country all the time. Exactly. Same with, there's like so many shows around town. There's Yas Queen, which is for women of color uh, every yeah. Thursday, and it's always sold out. Uh, is, shade. Is it every Thursday? Oh, sorry, not every Thursday. I I'm think confused. it's, it's once, once a, a month. month. It's once, I, I forget which Thursday, maybe the first Thursday, but either way, it's always sold out, right? There's all these shows, uh, Muslim Interrupted, Ali Hassan's show. Uh -huh. um, 
uh, you know, Jess Solomon and Iman, they do their... Uh, no, no, like, Jess Solomon and uh, Deanne Smith. No, no, that's Solomon and Smith. But um, Jess, uh, they, they do the El Solomons show. Oh, I with, haven't done it. Because, you know, Jess is Jewish, Iman is Palestinian. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, so they and do... And they so, are married. And they're married, you know. So my point is that today... Jess has a gun, <laughs> Iman only has rocks. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna send this to them. But my point is that there's so many more avenues for people. Oh, of yeah, color exactly. And like for that's women. what changed. Like Comedy Bar came along, mm -hmm. and now everybody and their dog mm -hmm. can put on a comedy show. Yeah, exactly. And it's not a comedy show. Plus, a lot of more of awareness mm -hmm. came about, which is good mm -hmm. and is bad. Well, also, because the quality. Uh, the quality deludes. No, hundred percent. And I, the delusions I absolutely of people. Agree with. <laughs> also. I agree that there is a hit to the quality because yeah. now, like I do, I, I know this from just booking my show. Yeah. Obviously, I don't want my show to be just one ethnicity or one group of people, right? So I try to have it a balance. But every month, I realize that just because of percentages, because of so many reasons, there just aren't as many ethnic comics. Out of a hundred, yeah. I would say maybe what ten percent, fifteen, twenty, yeah. twenty. If I'm being generous, right? So it's just the nature of who's getting, who's involved in the art. The counter argument to that is it has been so hostile to others that other people have not thought of comedy or historically did not think of comedy as something they could do. Yeah, you know, women, minorities. Et cetera, I was et fortunate because Mark Breslin. Uh, always treated me in that respect mm -hmm. with respect. Do you find he never? I didn't find that that uh, Yakex was no. They racist. treated you as a comedian. Yeah. Right. So like do you, a, that I was that was starting that was developing. What is that, your uh, uh, what is your like experience with the newer producers who do all these shows? Uh, Inclusive shows, ethnic shows, shows. I have done them all. Yeah. I have done them all. Uh, uh, what, what would I say? I do. Occasionally, I do queer and present danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have done shade once, the mm -hmm. one that, that they tape with the t with the TVO audience. Yeah, yeah, I don't apply that much because, as I said, I am developed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm taking the side. I'm taking the spot from from another person. Right, right. Yeah, my beef with those kinds of show is like to say, no, the headliner. Somebody that has been doing it for three months. Right, right, it's right. Delu it's delusional for the person. Mm -hmm. And it's delusional for the producer. Well, no, I see what you're say saying. Because, yeah, you don't want to give somebody that title before they're ready. Exactly. And then another thing is, uh, why don't you go? Like, as a, as a young comic, mm -hmm. I went to, even whether I was booked or not, I went to, to see the headliner <sighs> Four times, mm -hmm. like the the whole weekend, because since they let comedians yeah. or aspiring comedians free at the comedy club, I went to see them, and that's the way I that at the beginning, right in Montreal, the whoever came from mm -hmm. Ontario at the comedy works of Jimbo's mm -hmm. comedy works, uh, Ray Romano came, Louis C.K. came, um, Dennis Leary came, Eddie Brill came to the show, Dave Vatel, mm -hmm. Mark Maron, I saw all of those guys, mm -hmm. and you saw them Head, how they did it night I, after I, night and, and so i have the idea and then to, to clue in because i realize like when when you start doing comedy you think that it, that you that you come up with a set every all the time yeah and everybody um, thinks the saturday night nine o'clock show is how it's always gonna be yeah right or, so, or the one that you see on netflix exactly you like, don't yeah. see the you don't see how people do fake spontaneity you want to see what they how what do the headliner does on a thursday uh, versus the sunday versus yeah, friday like even if, if I did late a show sad job yeah i went to see them and then I, I when i started touring with the headliners of, of Mm -hmm. I, uh, I I I opened for Kenny. I opened for um, for Glenn Foster. Mm -hmm. I opened for all the big guys. Mm -hmm. For uh, for Eric Tony, mm -hmm. and I wrote for his talk show too. Mm -hmm. uh, I opened for who was the one? Uh, Mike Bullard. Oh, okay. Mike Bullard was like a like a master class in how to relate to the crowd okay okay. i find that in these new things you don't get that kind of uh, in these new niche shows yeah you don't do any of what you, you just don't described do any yeah. that you're preaching to the choir in fact uh a lot of the new wave of comedy is exactly an attempt to avoid doing what you did though yeah it's not that they're not doing it because they don't know 
people don't want to do what you just described. They don't want to go open for somebody else in no, the middle of Ontario. To. They don't want to necessarily do the road because it's a different comedy muscle. Do yes, it, right? it's a I, wholly I, different this, comedy this muscle. This was another another teaching from uh, uh, from my my older peers. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember who, but uh, the, for us, for the comics of Montreal, was amazing if Yakiak's book you to work outside Montreal because Montreal we were protected. Oh, absolutely. No, it's the same it's in the Toronto, same Toronto you Vancouver, were, uh, wherever you're at. So you're when <laughs> I imagine when I start doing the road, mm -hmm. my 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 desire was to pronounce mm -hmm. everything. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. not only not only pronounce enunciate. Enunciate, yeah. And not because if they miss it, they they Every, they miss one word, mm -hmm. they miss one word. I was of the set up punch school because mm -hmm. I come from Montreal and then my aim was to tell stories, which is mm -hmm. you see me now I do tell stories mm -hmm. on stage. And um it, it was a challenge, but I tell you I the pleasure I got mm -hmm. when I translated myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me, woman from Nicaragua that has nothing to do mm -hmm. in Timens, Ontario. Yeah, yeah. And I made them laugh. No, absolutely. Because you, 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 know? you won. Yeah. <laughs> it's a victory. You won. Whether they like me or not, whether they understood one word I said or mm -hmm. not, whether if they just were drunk and they just were mm -hmm. seeing this crazy Spanish woman. I know, but I did work very hard for that. Mm -hmm. And I find that when you, the more niche shows you do, it's beautiful to do, to perform for gay people, mm -hmm. for me. Mm hmm. For, it's beautiful to perform for Latin people, although Latin people are very homophobic. Okay, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not dissing my own, but... No, the same with brown people. You know, it's a very... Generally, with, uh, with a Latin crowd, I have had to win them over first mm -hmm. and come out... After. But yeah, but you're talking about doing niche shows where there is a separate yeah. kind of joy and even a separate kind of material that you're doing there because you're so close to them in terms of your identity. Right? Like yeah. you said, when you're doing a show for gay people, mm -hmm. you don't have to do jokes the same way you do for a regular mixed audience, right? Yeah. Because you have a shortcut. <laughs> yes, and still, you know, and still, uh, if I do gay shows, I'm gonna do my. I'm a gay person right, yeah. doing material. I mm -hmm. don't have to do everything about mm -hmm. being gay. Well, no, I. I mean, I was talking about this with some people where, you know, you don't necessarily have to like R-rated, uncensored shows. Or you don't necessarily have to like the super safe, inclusive shows, right? Yes. I'm sorry, you don't have to like the people running them. But that doesn't mean you can't do the shows themselves, right? Yeah. I find, like, I'll, like, obviously, you've done my show. It's 100% uncensored. It's extremely X-rated. Yeah. We say a lot of garbage stuff on stage, right? That's very harsh. Exactly. But at the same time, I also do this... All, uh, I do all the inclusive shows in the city or at least I try to get on and I have done them because it's a whole different muscle it's a different audience it's the audience that would not have come to my dark roast show on any given day of the week and I, I do enjoy being able to have range Yeah, you know when I go to let's say a show that's a South Asian themed show. I like being able to talk about things that I would never have been able to in any other, like if I'm doing a show for, and this was maybe a year ago, it was just like a Friday night early show. There weren't that many people, but there was a bunch of brown people who had just come to Canada. Mm -hmm. And I was able to talk to them about geographic things in India that nobody else is going to get. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? But exactly. it's it's fun to do that in that moment, but I can't build my whole career. <laughs> At least I wouldn't want to, I'd get bored. Exactly, you know? and then uh, you know what happened to me also that in 1997 mm. I opened for Gloria Stefan. Oh yeah, at the Air Canada Center, mm -hmm. and I have read in the Judy Carter book. Judy Carter, by the, who is a friend, by the way, mm -hmm. I even brought her to Montreal to teach a workshop and and, um, and to and, and to headline at the Comedy Nest. Yeah. So the thing is that that in the Judy Carter book it said. Judy Carter is like the ABC, right? How to? It was in my day. I yeah. don't know now, but uh, but she said that uh, the comedians opening for opening for bands, they have to know that they will go suffer. Because the people right. didn't come and see you. Yeah. They came to see the band. I, mm -hmm. I have this in my head. I couldn't sleep when I hear <laughs> that I was going to open for it. I couldn't sleep. Yeah. But then I realized, okay, so Anne May, I don't know if you know of Anne May. She's a, Anne May, uh, she was a booker for Yakiaks. Aunt uh, May? 
Anne. Oh, Anne May. Anne I was May. like, Spider-Man's aunt? No, what? Anne May, like, she was from France, Quebecoise. Okay. Okay. Marta Chavez. Mm -hmm. So Anne May and Evan take me to the CNE e mm -hmm. where Yak Yaks had a room. Mm -hmm. And I bomb. Oh. And I bombed with the material I was planning to do. For Gloria. For Stephane? Gloria. Oh, my God. So then, then uh, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Like, uh, la, 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 la. Ronnie know. Edwards. Oh, okay, okay. Ronnie Edwards, um, he, he says to me, sister, he goes, uh, what you have to do now when you go there is tell the joke. And speck that it comes back. Okay. Tell the joke because it's a big place. Yeah, yeah. And they don't and, and they react have, in waves, right? And yeah. you have to go slower. And then mm. I go, I meet Emilio Stefan right away. Mm. Who was like he made me feel so welcome. And then the, this is the idea Canada Center is at six o'clock, it's August. It's <laughs> it's outside. It's bright. It's bright. <laughs> oh so then I go I have it on tape. I then I go and I see that they have Cuban flags mm -hmm. and I and I have read about Gloria, right? Her, her mm -hmm. experience. And I go, Hi, I'm Arta Chavez from Nicaragua. I'm a refugee from Nicaragua, like Gloria. Mm -hmm. She brought me with ah, I think I may have said Muera Fidel. Mm -hmm. Death to Fidel. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna save myself. Of course. You yeah. know, like I wasn't gonna I didn't I did to the twenty audience. minutes. Yeah. And I and I got applause breaks. Nice, yeah. But still, the other day somebody says, "I remember you when you opened for Gloria Stefan." Wow, than, than the twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then, uh, so then that experience you transfer it to you. Mm -hmm. I yeah, you, you, I remember. I have. I have notebooks in, in which I, I give instructions to myself. Mm -hmm. Let's say I see somebody's destroying before me. I just write, I am who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be somebody else. Yeah, yeah. They like me. If I, I, I write my little notes to this day. Mm -hmm. or I have this, uh, and then uh, um, I transfer it to it. I have this experience and I can use the fear that I felt yeah. in this experience and how I survived it. Okay. To apply for other uh, yeah. other other well, shows. So you have you know all the skills and experience you've picked up from doing all these oh, different all, shows. That's yeah. why you have to do it, even if you risk that you won't be in the ideal way, mm -hmm. that they won't cater to you, your mm -hmm. ethnicity, your sexual orientation. I mean, your your sex life, or, or mm -hmm. you have to. That's why I said comedy is translation. Yeah, it's and it's, that's your literal uh, job, right? No, no, p <laughs> not yeah. pandering. Yeah, not pandering. But, but translating and applying all that. Then uh, that was 1997. Then came in through the out outdoor uh, a gay show uh, that uh, Andy Nullman, the CEO of Just for Laugh, a gay sketch show mm -hmm. that they uh, produced in Montreal, and I was not invited to be in the cast. It was Elvira, Maggie Casella, Leah Delaria, okay. Bob Smith, but I was invited to be warm up. Okay. And of course, I got my gala, my first gala, 1998. From mm -hmm. there, you oh, know, from the warm up. I, from the warm up, because I mean, just for laugh was mm -hmm, Susie, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they gave me the, yeah. the the 1998 gala, and then um. So then, then it's, it's all of these things. The more you push yourself mm -hmm. to be in situations that are not comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, like when I went to do my uh, my first tour in Alberta. Yeah, same thing. You gotta. <laughs> you I cannot gotta think of a less like, comfortable and, place. It's like a, a, <laughs> they don't know me, right? They but I always, yeah. I always apply, and um, I always write for the city that I am in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like whenever I go to whatever city, I learn, I read the news just before going. Of course, and that yeah, was easier yeah. with the internet and then say like uh, two, three things that make them believe mm -hmm. they are important. Right. No, yeah, you obviously kind of have to like soften yeah, and yeah, break yeah. the audience a little and bit. The first, yeah. There was a horrible one that they advised us that uh, it was going to be horrendous. Um, in, uh, in Alberta? Fairview, Alberta. Oh, God. Which is a pipeline. Uh, it, it is a bar. Okay. But I was with Sam Easton, mm -hmm. who is very, fr you know, Sam yeah, Easton, yeah. who is a very friendly person. And I was, uh, I had just done um, the movie with Denzel. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that gave me, and then all of these people that had, that were drunk, by 
the, uh, how would I say it? Blind when you're blind drunk. Blind drunk, yeah. Blind Just drunk. Done. Nothing is going through that brain. But they are laughing because yeah. I'm a movie star. Uh, <laughs> that's there. awesome. <laughs> in there, you know what I mean. <laughs> so I have had like a, a good career in yeah. that sense. I never became a household name. I don't know if I still have time. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. Well, I mean, but uh, but uh, for me, my aim was not to be rich and famous. My aim was to be a good comic. Yeah, yeah. Well, on that note, speaking of 1998, yeah. I want to talk to you about Norm MacDonald. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we were talking about that before the show, right? So yeah. I read, uh, just to like give everybody a Cliff's notes of the interview he did, where he sp basically said the Me Too movement was going too far. Uh, the Louis C.K. and Roseanne went through something that their victims didn't go through, which is lose everything overnight. And not to mention he the, the part that made me check out of that whole interview was he said that he didn't know racism was that bad these days till he saw the Sasha Baron Cohen show that he's doing lately so at that point I knew this is a guy who's not connected to the world no. after that he issued an apology he went on Howard Stern he said that he's sorry for people if he made them feel like re-victimized blah 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 it was very like he's very awkward in the way he discusses politics right and his defenders the usual suspects they're like leave norm alone freedom of speech me too has gone too far blah 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 louis ck should be allowed to do stand up again you know the whole sa same deal in his show which is why this interview happened norm mcdonald has a show he actually even interviews a bunch of people There's, some of them are really good interviews actually one of the ones that kind of stood out was the drew barrymore interview because there she kind of agrees with him she's like you know the things we used to say to each other when we were children now it's all taboo and that part kind of surprised me because that's not a good argument for you smell anything. Like, poo? like <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you just, smell like poo. Was it's nice that they want to say when we were children? <laughs> I mean, it's like just because something was okay to do twenty years ago is not a reason for it to be okay now. If anything, it's a reason to look at it. Exactly. Right, and be like, should we change this? We've been doing this for twenty years. Maybe it deserves a second look. Yeah, right. well, I understand what he's saying. Mm -hmm. He is not seeing the transgression mm -hmm. of what tweet from Roseanne mm -hmm. to lose it all. But what I think is that she didn't lose it all over one tweet. She lost it all because even before, mm -hmm. even in her first sitcom, writers believed that she was a nightmare. Oh. to work for. Okay. Like that she was very difficult. And I understand why she she may have been a nightmare because she said in those days that they wanted to sanitize her. Oh, okay. That they wanted to take the blue colorness of of her essence because mm -hmm. that's exactly why Roseanne was so different in those days. Mm -hmm. No other woman on television has been a fat woman with opinions mm -hmm. and talking about my husband it was mm -hmm. all the opposite right although right. i love lucy lucy wanted to be him and he's the one with the accent right but right they, but women were prime proper and perfect mm -hmm. and she broke that mold and once that carsey warner gave her the show mm -hmm. she said that they were going to sanitize her right. so it was difficult to write for her plus she's a difficult person she she fell on her head when she was uh she had a very bad head injury mm -hmm. and she confessed in a, in a in the second autobiography that she had in which she's with Tom Arnold in a picture mm -hmm. she said that she and Tom Arnold used to do industrial amounts of uh, chemical drugs <laughs> of course they that do. has to affect you I'm of sorry course. no but that's that, that's right <laughs> that she didn't lose everything because of one tweet it was no. a series of also, events she was probably a nightmare mm -hmm. to it work at the moment and then they decided yes and comparing black people with monkeys at this day and age it is like, oh yeah, yeah it's, a cute, it's one thing but you know like you're just feeding the fire mm -hmm. of this horrible monster yeah. that has shown up it's not that, that it's not that he awakened racism must have been there mm -hmm. but uh, they they are emboldened by the brazen yeah, racism of the president yeah and and the the even the defense that oh it was just a tweet it was just a joke i find it a little hypocritical yeah for comedians to say something is just a joke i'm like your whole job is that your words are important exactly you go up on stage because you believe your your words are important but the second somebody pushes back you're like oh that wasn't important that was just a joke that was just a, that didn't mean anything she has a track record yeah. also 
of of uh, ignorant tweets. Mm -hmm. She pushed the birther. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The birther she pushed the, the birther. The, the, the birther thing of Obama. Yeah. What else did she do? Just no, she, tons so of the, things, And yeah. I believe that maybe they wouldn't have fired her, but, it, but they, maybe they just said, "Let's get rid of mm -hmm. her. She's driving us crazy." Maybe yeah. it's my opinion. No, that's true. Maybe well, they just said, and I loved like you know you you cannot imagine how I loved that woman. Mm -hmm. Although when I did see her in Just for Love, I did not say hello to her. Yeah, well because. I thought she will, she will bark at me mm -hmm. and then she'll be dead to me <laughs> completely. Well, I think like the way you're describing <laughs> how you looked up to Roseanne and then how she yeah. fell is a similar sentiment to how a lot of comedians, including myself, looked up to Louis C.K. And then, you know, it was, I think, three or four years ago that these allegations started to bubble up. And that's yeah. when kind of put up, like for me, I have a hard time separating the art from the artist yeah, but especially in his case yeah i mean his <laughs> he, that, that he was he was like a, we thought that he was honest yes that, so i mean if yeah come back louis come back on stage only if you address if what happened you have to, absolutely yeah and then if, if you like went uh, uh, through a process of realizing mm -hmm. that what you did was wrong say it he never say it even he never it, say it his like apology it. was not even i remember reading it five <laughs> times and going am i crazy or is he praising himself in his apology yeah it was because he had, he did ask them now a lot there is another current that says that a lot of women did take advantage of men that wanted to sleep with them. Mm -hmm. It never happened to me. Mm -hmm. I was never offered a, I, I was never offered <laughs> like a, a coach audition. <laughs> never, 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 never a comedy club owner wanted to sleep with me. Never the comics on the road mm -hmm. wanted to 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 harass me or anything. Mm -hmm. That's why when some people say the Yakia comic the Yaki I have tour for twenty years with mm. the Yakia comic. Wait, you're saying that some people are saying that women are using their sexuality uh, yeah, to go, get ahead. Some people say that. Oh, okay. I mean they, it, people of there's uh, always people saying that. And to be, it yeah. may have been at one point mm. what women were trained to think. As a way of circumventing the the, the yeah, nature I of the will, beast. I yeah. will I will do this mm -hmm. so I can get this. It, it, it is it's it's not only men mm -hmm. that are ingrained in the in the patri patriarchal uh, behavior. Also women. It's also women. Uh, there's a British actress today who was on BBC talking about this. She's also she's of South Asian descent. I forget her name. She's on The Good Place, I think, and she was specifically talking about the Kardashians. She was saying that yeah, uh, they are people like that or women. Actually, she specifically was talking about women. She's like, you know, they, and what you just said. This this actress, she's I think a little younger, maybe in her twenties. But what she was saying is that women who are tools of the patriarchy also need to be called out. We yeah. have to be able to give constructive criticism to a woman who's bad for other women. And the example she was using was like the Kardashians. They market things like uh, weight loss lollipop or yeah. stuff like that. You know, like appetite suppressants. Their company's called Flat Tummy. And she's like, this is somebody who is in a position of power who a lot of young girls look at them as almost their big sister role models, right? Yeah. And what are they doing with that? They're doing with that what... They're, they they're priming them for men. They're priming them for men. Everything is <laughs> right? priming for men. Everything. Yeah. And I, my mo because my mother was of the first generation of lawyers mm -hmm. in Nicaragua. And my mother always would come back, let's say, but my father was a lawyer too. Mm -hmm. And I saw equality between both of them. Mm -hmm. Although he was more important because he, he's a man because he was a man mm -hmm. i mean there was a quality in that she could get these jobs but he didn't have the complaints that she had yeah no, that, absolutely. That, that she would come to the house and as, as she would take her earrings she would say and i don't sleep my way up and stuff like that as yeah. if you know and then i always learned mm -hmm. that you had to fight that as a woman that's why when, when you asked me how was it was it difficult it may have been but i ignored it right because right. i i ignored it because i had other difficulties to concentrate you gotta toughen up is what you're saying exactly to concentrate mm -hmm. like pronouncing well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like translating well yeah yeah because humor is the humor you don't translate word by word but but i only i never did it in spanish it's i went mm -hmm. back to spanish when I was a headliner yeah. in English. Already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I started doing it in Spanish. Well, are there any women today, young, new comics that you think are yeah, very I, promising? Like your oh, favorites yeah. that you think are going to do really well? I think well? Anna Maria. Anna Maria Stoich, yeah. Anna Maria Stoich, uh, I think Carol. 
Carol Zoccoli is amazing. Carol yeah. Zoccoli. I, I, there is a lot of women that I love. I don't want to single when them. No, please single and them. The, and there is a lot of women that I don't. <laughs> that you don't and like? And men. You want to name them too? And men, and men. You know like that, what I mean? I hate laziness. Laziness. I okay. hate laziness because I have worked for every joke. Mm -hmm. I have honed it. I have gone out to this point after 25 years. You see me in mm -hmm. open mics. Of course, yeah. No, I'm still you know, honing you it. Know, I, I tell a lot of people it's you and you know who else? Ron Jossel. Yeah, like Ron the, Jossel. The two of you have, uh, are and like. We you were you the don't ethnic mean, people in those days. I yeah. was the only Spanish person mm -hmm. in, in, in Canada. Yeah, I and, think. and Ron is a Filipino comedian and people didn't know what Filipino was. So he, I remember talking to him and he used to, even his jokes, if you see his earliest galas, he had to pretend or talk about. Chinese stuff or being Samoan or like kind of yeah, find a Samoan way to baby. yeah find a way to ease <laughs> the people into the Philippines. Yeah. But that is that was what 25 years ago yeah. and to this day you see him at open mics trying yeah. new and not just like the good ones where there's people he'll go to everything Monday I love to, to go Sunday. To open mics. Although I am afraid of people stealing your things. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, try to do it like I do it, bitch. Oh, I did <laughs> I did Anna Maria's uh, uh, speaking of Anna Maria's uh, uh, mic last night which starts at 11 15 wow. p.m and it's a bucket so they take names out of a bucket so you don't know and i was the bullet you go, you go on <laughs> oh god oh you know that was another thing <laughs> that i was gonna tell you yeah when people told you the, the hierarchy i was in montreal i was the bullet for a long time yeah you know what i didn't have uh the, i didn't have a high the i wasn't high enough the and hierarchy then, yeah and then you had to learn to be the bullet no I, you know what i i enjoy taking bullets at open mics because it makes the Saturday show so much easier. Yeah. You know, if you've done that, like what I just described, 11.15, it didn't even start, I think it started at 11.30. Yeah. Seven actual, mem you know, people in the audience, which is really good for a Tuesday night on mic, and then 20 comedians in the back waiting to get their names drawn. Nobody's laughing at each other's jokes. They're just wondering if their name's going to be drawn from a bucket. You right? know who else I love? <laughs> Juliana. Rodriguez? Rodriguez, she's great. And yeah. Jen Sacato. Jen Sacato? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I love a lot. I love most of, uh, most uh, most people that are the ones that I don't like are the the ones that want to get by by ethnicity mm -hmm. because they given a bad name to all of us. So you're talking about you know you like hustlers. You like people. I who are like people mm -hmm. who work because yeah. I work very hard in mm -hmm. this. No, I no I agree with that too because I I tend to judge people who look like me harsher because I'm like yeah. we have to be better. <laughs> Exactly. And your success or your failure actually impacts me and everybody else who looks exactly. like you. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I wish that I would have been, and the only reason I wish I would have been a, 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 a hetero white comic mm -hmm. is because then I could just be a comic. I'm not representing. You're not representing anybody. Whereas well, yeah. well, we are representing. Yeah. I didn't want this bird. Well, if I see a South Asian comic <laughs> do poorly in on TV or any mass, that instantly I know I'm going to be judged because of that. Right, yeah. they're gonna be oh, this so and so did so poorly. Maybe we don't trust people who look like. And uh, it's only true in certain cases, but it's still true. Yeah, right. It's it's a fact that it's something that you have to deal with because you know you are not the template as Hannah Gatsby. I think she mentioned like yeah, you know like if you're not straight, white, and male, you're not a normal essentially like exactly. I, i'm butchering what she said but her idea was that yeah i mean being a straight white guy is also an ident identity right yeah everything else is considered other so if you are like a, 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 a gay nicaraguan you know comedian immigrant and all these other labels yeah. suddenly your like i said your success or failure will forge a path or block a path you know and another <laughs> thing that i hate is is people that pander to 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 the master right in the sense like uh, uh, oh, yeah. I, i hate i heard bootlickers i heard a uh, joke the other day uh, i am this i am that i am that if i were gay i would feel a lot of boxes I would, oh, uh, I, right. it, it would be great for my comedy because I would be in a lot of boxes. What are you saying, mm. motherfucker? No, they're saying that people who are all those things are not funny inherently. No, that's but that you, <laughs> that you get things mm -hmm. because of because your identity. Because of, of that. And yeah, I have, that's been my 25 year uh, fight. Well, yeah, I do yeah. not get things only because of that. I mm. do. Uh, people don't laugh at my jokes just because the, the accent is funny. I work on my jokes. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you I wanna have proven myself. And you want to see 
other comedians following after you do the same. Yeah. Because if you're taking a shortcut using your identity to get on a show, you are then making it worse for everybody who's like you. Yeah, exactly. Right? And <laughs> or, another thing is stop concentrating on fame. Mm -hmm. Oh, because yeah. Because that's something yeah. that may or may not come. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, yep. uh, nobody exp nobody's career exploited Um, blew up like Russell Peters, let's right, say. Yeah. Very few people. Ver it's Very a few anomaly. Canadian. It's a total mm -hmm. anomaly. It was timing and the fact that there weren't any South Asian people. And then they <laughs> put his thing on the, on the YouTube. On you and YouTube and had just come out. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Mm. And he had that gift of relating yeah, to ethnic yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Was it politically correct? Maybe not even not, close. Not even close. <laughs> but he had the gift. Yeah, the guy and is because, up. <laughs> and because he, uh, he, he was brown, he could get away with it. Yeah, in 2002, a brown guy doing a Chinese accent on TV was fine. He was fine. No, he doesn't still, 30, you know, 50. That's what he did, he, right? And, and still, you know, I, I think that he still can get away with it. He could. But if any, if I went up on stage and I made fun of Asian people, People by doing their accent, I would they get, get that way. <laughs> that's because you're not Russell. He has a certain charisma, like a, ability, charisma, I guess. Yeah, people charisma are like, oh, about yeah, that. Yeah. And I know that some people have beef with Russell and everything, but you know, just the other day he gave five thousand dollars to Gavin Stevens. Oh, the uh, yeah, Gavin yeah, Stevens' yeah, when house. When my mother was yeah. sick, and Lisa will always be grateful to to Russell. When my my mother was sick, I came to do a tour, mm -hmm. and he was asking me. And he came to do a spot at the club and he was asking how things are going and I go, well, you know, like I, I am in Guatemala, I mm -hmm. am not coming here often and, um, you know, money, the money that I have in the movies and it went and then he, after that he go, he, he goes, up, can you do me a favor, go to my truck outside and give me a binder that I have there mm -hmm. and I go, I, I don't know what it was and he gave me money. Oh my God, In wow. the thousands. Oh, I'm sure. Wow, for no. my mother. That's amazing. And I never yeah. asked him. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, out of he, the goodness of his heart. Mm -hmm. no, you that's know, so I wish him all the success he has. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, he has a lot of it. Uh, he, has, he has a lot <laughs> of Between, it, yeah. I think it's every year it's either him or Seinfeld who are the highest grossing touring comedians in North America. Yeah. Right? And so. he's never booked me for a show with him because he used to tell me he can't follow me. I believe Why? that. <laughs> Why? Because I am a preview. He's going to come and talk about accents. Yeah, yeah. And I have an accent, Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah, you don't want somebody to step over your premise before you, right? Yeah, so uh -huh. so I, 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 it's not because of, of uh, that he's booking me or anything. Mm -hmm. Or that I hope for a booking, but I wanted to give a shout out when a shout out is due. Yeah. What else do you want to talk about? That that was pretty much it. I was just gonna ask you if oh, you how about Norm Macdonald? We never finished talking about. Well, it. we we we. I'm sure the internet can talk about the rest of it. The I just rest of it. <laughs> no, you know what? I admire him. Like he's mine. He's uh, he and I was kind of like I agree with certain things he mm -hmm. said. I don't think he's the devil. Mm -hmm. I just think he's out of touch. Well, I kind of personally, you know? I got I got the sense that not just that he's not that he's not out of touch, but he never was in touch. I don't think he. That's you not a part happened? of life he, he got engages in. Cancer at one point, mm -hmm. and after that, I think he became a Christian. Huh. And he's uh, like a, one of those crazy Christians. And then he, like he, fundamentalist, fundamentalist, oh, okay. and he may be hiding it. Okay, and okay. that's why he's not saying mm -hmm. anything. But uh, I just kind of got the sense that he's just out of his depth. You know, like that Bill Burr. He's got that bit about he doesn't want to get too old for the world, right? Uh -huh. Where he doesn't want to be the guy in the car yelling at turn the music down. This is not real music. Back in my day, real music was about praising Satan and drinking the blood of goats. <laughs> real rock music, not this DJ bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him. You know, Linda and I, we love Bill Burr. And he He's may great. Be, he may be politically He's incorrect, extremely incorrect. Extremely, yeah. But it's just like... I know where he's coming yeah, from. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you know, he's he, he definitely he's got ideas and things that I might not necessarily agree with. But yeah, the context is, A, it, you know, he is trying to make a larger point almost. Yeah. And B, if you don't like it, don't listen. Don't listen. <laughs> Even my hero, George Carlin. Right, yeah, same Even here. Even my hero, my mm -hmm. hero has a, has, a, has a bit in which he says, give him the boys to Michael Jackson. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the boys to him. Jesus Christ. Like, go see, go see. It. But, but I know. You know, he's being absurd. He's yeah, no, yeah. no, no, he was saying it was a reflection on, on how. 
people idolizes people. Right, right, right. So right, he okay, talks okay. before of that. He talks mm -hmm. about uh, Sinatra. Mm -hmm. He talks about Elvis. Then he talks about Michael Jackson and Iraq. Like, bring him the boy. But it's not that he's saying that, but he's saying it's the culture people, people will celebrity culture will, people or yeah. will, uh, will uh, get it people people will uh, admit it right they will because be of celebrity yeah. culture no no i mean that's the thing right we kind of hold these people up to this perfect ideal and suddenly they do something that we're like oh my god you're actually not perfect you're not this and god that's <laughs> another thing you know like for example with michael jackson music i will i i still listen to it i fuck that's my yeah no that, there's no denying his talent and I, I i i could separate the person from the accusation which he was he was acquitted well my uh, this, no, I, I know all. people i know people disagree on this i always thought that he was innocent i just kind of got the feeling that just because of his life i mean i don't know if i'm yeah. right or not and just because of his life people know this he didn't have a childhood so he was trying to recreate his childhood when he had money right yeah. and then the the fact that just if he was truly who he was i would have thought there would be more people coming out like more parents of children going so just like yes. a couple of things and like that you princess know princess lee has told a, a story about the creepy dentist who was the fa was her dentist and he was the father of one of the kids of the actual kids yeah yeah there was he says, there was, he says uh, carrie fisher says that he told her he said the at the neverland ranch yeah, his son is very good looking, you know. Yeah, that's what I As mean. As if they were pimping the children. That's to what him. I mean. So with like with, so, with with MJ, I always thought, okay, there's there's too much here that I can't make up my mind, and I'm gonna kind of. It's not R. Kelly, no. right? It's not like R. Kelly peeing on a 15 year old. No, it's not R. Kelly, and it's not Chris Brown. It's not Chris Brown. It's not Bill Cosby. It's not Bill Cosby. I mean, I mean, I love Bill Cosby. I I because of that friend of mine, John Rogers, who mm -hmm. wrote for him. He said he used to tell us that he swore like a sailor, <laughs> that you had to call him Doctor Cosby, yeah, because of that honorary degrees that he had, mm -hmm. and that they, he, they were always shaking because they would do a script and he would change everything. Oh, of course he did. At the in the in the nick of time, mm -hmm. just before. Uh, so he was kind of like a monster that way. I, 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 that's Gomeshi, kind of I hate his. I hate you, Gomeshi, if Gome you're listening. No, he can he can I, go because eat a dick. he actually showed that reel of him breaking the ribs of a woman yeah with yeah. consent mm -hmm. or not consent you're sick in your fucking head oh no 100 percent. i mean like a lot of people there was like this minor attempt to reframe it as a sex positive kink positive bdsm thing but no 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 no, 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 no. what no. he was doing was none of those things no, <laughs> i'm no, sorry and now this you, you this attempt that he just like had like recently mm -hmm. oh it's horrible. But anyway, it has been very nice talking to you. So anything you want to plug? Anything I coming am, up? Well, I have a show tomorrow at the Hughes Room, but I don't know if this, this no, is going to be not ready enough tomorrow. Time. I am uh, hosting Accent on Toronto at the oh. Danforth Music Hall. This on is the like day that marijuana becomes legal. October 17th. October 17th, nice. Danforth Music Hall. I am hosting it at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. You can get tickets at the CB, uh, at the Ticketmaster. Yes. Accent on, on Toronto. Toronto. Uh, please yeah. get me on that show sometime. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. That was Martha Chavez, episode eight. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.